along here. Uh, we're going to look at practice four, which is looking at intersection points of functions and areas between curves, and you'll need this, for example, for uh, volumes of revolution, etc. We're also going to look at how you store and reuse values for memory to make sure you get as many uh, significant digits as possible. So within the AP questions, usually they give you uh, a rough sketch of some sort of the function to know uh, which function you'll be starting with in terms of which one will you be subtracting. So I'm going to clear this second and quit. Uh, so I've got a, a back at the home screen here. So it says the area between the y-axis, y equals 3x plus 10, and y equals e to the x in the first quadrant. Well, uh, I know that this point is x equals 0, the y-axis, but I need to figure out this intersection point right here uh, because I don't know what it is and I can't really do it with regular algebra. Okay, because I've got that e to the x and a 3x. Uh, I'd be trying all day actually to do that with regular algebra and I wouldn't be able to solve for it. So I've got to use technology. So the first thing we need to do is an intersection point. And, oh, by the way, it says in the first quadrant. So let's take a look at this. Um, so what I need to do is, uh, let's see here. So I have to use my solver. So math, uh, then I want to go down and hit solver, enter and there's no equation in there right now so I don't have to clear anything and here notice I have 0 equals so I have to have everything on the left side so for this I'd usually have 3x plus 10 equals uh, e to the x and that's how I would solve it but instead I'm going to do 3x plus 10 and then I'm going to minus the other thing now, I don't have to put this one in brackets, but sometimes it's nice to put it in brackets if the other function has um, more than one term. So this one is going to be second function 1, e to the exponent of x. Okay, so I've got that, e to the exponent of x. And then I hit enter. And I need to make a guess. Now, is my first guess going to be 0? Because I know it's in the first quadrant, right? And if you look... I'm not going to leave a guess as zero because I'm, there's going to be another, if you think about this, the, that line's going to continue back there and there's going to be one more intersection point, right? Because it's e to the x. So if you know, if you think about this, right, that e to the x is going to keep going there asymptotically along, along the x-axis and this straight line, 3x plus 10, is going to come back. So there is going to be an intersection back here. So anyway, let's try for, for the start. Let's put at least put our first intersection or our first guess in the first quadrant. So... Well, maybe not one, but let's try point one. Okay, so then I do alpha, enter, and oh, look at that. It did give me the negative, negative 3.32. So way back here to the left, negative 3.32. So that's, uh, so I need to get make my guess further to the right. So let's do one. So alpha, enter. Does that give, no, that doesn't. Okay, so I'm still getting that solution to the right. So let's try two. Alpha, enter. There we go. There's your solution. 2.933, etc. All right, so that's where we know where they intersect. So the x value of that intersection point is 2.93, etc. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. So how can I get that number on the screen again, that intersection point, without retyping or writing it down? There it is right there, folks. So notice... The calculator at that point has stored uh, 2.93 as x because it solved for x, right? So it's got an x value of 2.933, etc. So we're going to be able to do something here. So the question is, I have to get the area between those two curves. And so it's going to be the, always the top curve, subtract the bottom curve, right? The top curve, subtract the bottom curve. And so that's going to be... Let's go in and do this. So I'm going to, on my home screen, I'm going to go alpha window. Whoops. No, sorry. Alpha window. There we go. Actually, I need to get second and quit to go to the home screen. Alpha window. And I'm going to do function integrate because I want area under the curve. And I'm going between 0, which is the y-axis. And then I've got that great big long number here to put in. 2.9333965, etc. I'm going to try something. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it in. 
point nine three three two point nine three three nine five nine five six two seven and then I'm doing that for three x plus 10 minus, and I put it in brackets, second function e to the x, and then another bracket there, and it's going to be dx. And I hit enter, and there's my error, error area, 24.4498. Now what I want to do is, I want to capture this up here and edit it and see if I get the same result. If I go all the way back here, I'm not sure. I, I really am not sure if it's if I put an X in there, will I get the same result? Let me go up, whoops, down. And hit delete, delete all those. And see if that X has still been stored. I'm going to put an X there. Hit enter. Yeah, and I get the same result. Take a look. So I didn't have to retype that all. Now what's interesting about that is the X right there in the limit of integration, it's expecting a number, not a variable. So since it's expecting a number in there, it assumes that that x is the most recent x value that has been stored in the calculator. On the other hand, this 3x and this e to the x and this dx all refer to functions. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you get area between curves uh, using the integral and also uh, how you find intersection points. So when you're done, folks, which you are now, um, you might want to redo that one just to make sure you've got it. But here's another question and there's your answer for it, okay? So the area between the y-axis, y equals cos x, which is the red curve, and y equals one-half x in the first quadrant. So same sort of thing, folks. Here we go. Good luck.